regard, does that say, talking about neighborhood schools, are you talking about eliminating busing? Or it, it would never be eliminated altogether. I mean, the, the, the 70 or so million dollars used for transportation, some of that has to be kept for special ed students, for disabled students. But certainly there is money that we can take from that. The contract will be up next year. It should go back into the schools, which would open up more seats and use money saving our transportation costs that could go back into schools and specifically earmarked for underperforming schools so that every neighborhood has an excellent school choice. So you are the only candidate in the questionnaire who wrote um, in favor of closing schools because you know, of a lot of the, uh, the empty seats. Can you talk a little bit more about that stand? <laughs> and like, still beat your wife? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't come out in favor. I said my inclination is to not close to schools, but obviously if a school is crumbling, if enrollment is down, if there aren't resources, then if that needs to happen, we need to make sure that kids have excellent educational opportunities. Um, Do you see any of that in GP? Do you think there are schools in GP that need to be closed? You know, it's interesting. Um, as a Latin school alum, one of our great rivals is English High School. I had breakfast um, with Michael Conopasis, who was my headmaster, former superintendent of school, who was supporting me, and we talked about that. I mean, it's a school where my father, all my uncles went to. I mean, it is an institution. There's a rivalry between Latin school and English as to which is actually older. Latin school, of course, is older, but English, uh, Latin school closed down during the uh, Civil War, or the Revolutionary War, so there's some, uh, <laughs> some <laughs> dispute as to which is older. So Mike Conopasis said that he would, uh, you know, save that school, but many other superintendents wouldn't um, because of the rich history associated with it. But we're seeing some real um, challenges there, and I agree with Mike that we need to fight to save that school more than others, uh, or not more than others, but because of its special historical trends. Um, I, I cannot think of any specific schools in JP or West Roxbury or throughout the city that I would say might be used or might be candidates for closing, but certainly other factors could warrant that. One of my aunts is a, one of my aunts uh, teaches in the so-called circle of promise, which is sort of that euphemism of underperforming schools in Dorchester, in Roxbury, and Mattapan. Um, and we're seeing, with that recent designation, a, a better revival of um, parental involvement of teachers going the extra mile. Um, so I would like to see schools remain open, but I'm just trying to answer this fairly. If it were to happen, then but we'd have to look at those factors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, on the uh, issue of firefighter arbitration, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you uh, wrote that you do not believe that public employees should be rewarded with financial incentives for passing a drug test, um, but you support collective bargaining and arbitration. The question that we're really um, trying to dig at is you know, the original uh, proposal was 19.5%, and there were some city councils who felt that because the arbitrator ruled at 19.5% that they had an obligation to support the arbitrator's decision. Do you feel that that is a city um, I'm not trying to be cute or evasive. I don't know the answer to that question. And I remember speaking with you, you know, when this came out, we talked about it. It's a tough thing. I do support, you know, the sanctity of collective bargaining. However, I have always felt uh, and continue to feel that we should not be rewarding uh, any employees, particularly public safety employees, with a financial incentive to pass a drug test. I know it from my time spent at the sheriff's department when as a, you know, low mid level manager, I would have to take random drug tests, but the officers had a set period, it was either a month before or after either their birthday or their hire date, I forget which, and I always thought there was something inherently um, odd about that. So with the firefighters contract, um, you know, I, I really and truly would have fought for compromise and was proud that the council, I think, really shown um, in the, the union as well um, in coming up with some sort of compromise. I would have thought to facilitate that as well. Uh, our audience questions, please um, send them over to uh, Jessica. I'm going to ask a couple of audience questions that were um, given to us earlier. Right. Um, I don't think in your answer on environment and energy you talked at all about green space, so we wanted to uh, check in with you about uh, you know, how you would prioritize green, green space um, as a city councilor and you know, what measures you think specifically need to be taken. Um, one of the reasons that drew me to Jamaica Plain was a lifelong love affair with Jamaica Pond. I run around it as frequently as possible. Uh, it's less frequent now with the campaign, but have always gone down there. But you know, rented the rowboats have just that's been such a magical place. And the whole emerald necklace through JP to the Arboretum, 
to Millennium Park and West Roxby. We're very lucky in this district to have such incredible park and open space land, and I would fight to protect it. I would fight to bring more development. You know, we have the movies sometimes at the Sugar Bowl. We need to be doing more to really foster a sense of community and having more programming out there. One thing I was at breakfast the other day, at a great brunch with Joel and Henya and Val, and we were sort of lamenting the fact that the farmer's market, you know, is in the back of the bank of parking lot. You know, there's so many great open spaces from parts of the pond, maybe the greening, green and loring house that we could have to really use that instead. So there, I would be, you know, truly in favor of developing more community programming, doing more to protect open space, to build new playgrounds when we can, particularly on school sites. Um, it's what is perhaps, you know, most magical about this district is that we are part of the city, but we have such an incredible uh, array of open park land. It really is, is among the best parts of this neighborhood. Um, can you tell us what committees you would like to join and more specifically what committee you would uh, like to chair? Sorry. Um, certainly ways and means you know, to have the most impact working with the budget, working with the process during the, the annual budget. Uh, negotiations and hearings would be one. The Education Committee would be another. The Arts and Humanities Committee is something that I would love to be a part of and perhaps chair. You know, I think John Tobin has done some great work with that committee in really celebrating arts and doing more. And this is a guy who came from a background of being a stand-up comic and running comedy clubs. It gave him a, a unique perspective on, on the arts. So it's something that we've had such great artists in Jamaica Plain and in West Roxbury. It was open studios this weekend. Carlos House and bought a beautiful print when we visited and uh, saw many of you out there on the streets. So we need to be doing more to really tap into the cultural economy of the city. So that's a great way you can do it. And uh, what would you do about uh, the cuts and closures for the Boston Public Library this last year? Yeah. I remember every Monday as a kid um, going to the West Roxbury Library with my um, mother and two older sisters because they closed at 9 o'clock on Mondays. I think they still may. And it sort of because of that, really developed a, a love of libraries and books. And it is crucial to do more um, to protect the closings. They are such hubs. We need to be doing more within the libraries to make sure that you know we can close this digital divide. We have web classes and uh, computer literacy classes for not only kids but adults and seniors as well. Um, one proposal I do favor is allowing the board of trustees of the libraries to be able to do their own fundraising. I think that's a way that we can really start addressing some of the budget uh, gaps and shortfall. And I know Councilor Roy has joined us, and he uh, should be commended for his leadership, you know, in making sure that we were able to protect libraries and communities. Well, that kind of feeds into my next question. Now. Which city council are you looking forward to partnering with? And no fair. We definitely have to Thank you for. <laughs> So, I mean, certainly, you know, Felix has hit the ground running um, and has done some great things. I've been very honored to have received endorsements from three of the councillors, um, the at-large council from West Roxbury, John Connolly, and the two neighboring councillors for this district, Mike Ross and Rob Consalvo. Um, I began interning and was a legislative aide in the summer, you know, through high school and college, so I've had the great opportunity to work with many of the councillors that, you know, have been around since then, Maureen Feeney and Chuck Turner. It came in the late 90s with Charles Yancey. So um, I really would look forward to working with all of them if I'm lucky enough to get elected. And I think that I would be able to be an effective advocate and deliver for this district because of some great relationships and collaborations that I've had with many of these councilors and other elected officials in the past. In, in the past, you've been a strong supporter of uh, the mayor. And I'm wondering, as a city councilor, what ways do you uh, think you'd be independent of? I mean, I, I am a strong supporter. I, I campaigned hard for him in his last re-election. I think he's done some amazing things. You know, having grown up here, that doesn't give me any special insight to serve, but it does give me a unique perspective on the way the city has changed. And I think in many, by many measures, uh, the mayor's done some great things. Having said that, I'm going to stand with him on issues in which we agree and stand uh, on my own merits on issues in which we disagree. And I think I've gone through some of them before talking about reform of the BRA or the hybrid school committee or giving the council power, better um, power with, uh, in regards to the budget. So my ultimate you know, constituency isn't on the fifth floor of City Hall, but it's the people in this room and the people all across Jamaica Plain and West Roxbury. And that's what I'm going to be beholden to. Um, I think our last uh, question here, um, you talked in your jobs question about emulating a model uh, used in the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department yep. for, uh, for diversity uh, uh, hiring. 
maybe you can expand on that a little bit. Tell us a little bit about that program and how you implement it you know, in a larger way. Absolutely. Um, one of the programs that has worked best um, under Sheriff Cabral has been diversifying the workforce of the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department and it was better outreach into communities of color, but particularly for women. Um, unfortunately, there are more and more women going through the uh, correctional system and there are fewer and fewer female correctional officers, so she made a real concerted effort and helped change that and bring more people into the process. But it comes down to having job fairs. Uh, better recruitment, using some great tools like Roxbury Community College, Bunker Hill Community College, and recruiting to make sure that we have a workforce that truly looks like the city of Boston. And as I mentioned in my questionnaire, I would, you know, put my money where my mouth is by making sure that I had a staff that reflected the vibrancy and diversity of this district. All right, I think we have about uh, two minutes for uh, right. those. One more question? One more question? Can you write it down? <laughs> We can talk after if you want to say. Um, less than 24 hours ago, from a couple miles from where we're currently sitting or standing, five people were shot. And four of those people have died. One is likely to die. Of the four that died, one was three or four years old. Now, I don't have any children. I have three nephews, ages three and four and six. Whether you have children or grandchildren or nephews or nieces or little siblings or cousins or honorary of any of those roles, this is a story that haunts all of us. I've been thinking about it all day. I know many of you have as well. I'm not naive or arrogant enough to suggest that a city councilor or a city council or one person or one government agency can prevent these senseless killings. But I am suggesting that by doing more, working together with all of us, the people in this room, people outside this room, the public safety stakeholders, with community centers, with, with schools, we can be doing more to make sure that that senseless tragedy doesn't happen. And we need to be doing more. I'm not running for this office because of any brand design or ego or because I want my name on a bumper sticker or I want a really nice parking spot in City Hall Plaza. I'm running because I know this city district. I've got roots in every part of this district. I love this district, and I want to leave the city a little better off than the way I found it. I very respectfully ask for your consideration and ask for your vote on October 19th. By working together, we can really make this great city better. So thank you for your time. Thank you for staying to the whole minute.